Our next caller is Angela from California. Hey, Angela, how can we help you? Hi. Um, so my question is, can supination of the feet be corrected? And what kind of priming would help with that? Oh, yeah. Great Absolutely. question. So uh, supinating of the feet, uh, not as common as pronating, but let me just for the audience explain kind of what that is. So supinating is when your ankle turns out. So it be your foot kind of turning up on the inner part, out uh, and down on the outer part. Pronation would be like a flat foot, the opposite, going the opposite what, direction. What do you what do you think is the most common when you when you see that? Because it's rare to see that. You see pronating more than you see supinating. What, what, what kind of client or what type of person that comes to mind when you think of that? Oh, uh, so dancers. A dancer, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah. I had a few dancers that had that. Yeah, I was trying to think of a sport that where that would cause that. What's, what, what? Dancers is the only time I've really yeah. seen it in a big way. Lots they, of external rotation with their movements. Yeah, overarching sometimes in the in the in the feet. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen that happen. But um, by any chance, uh, uh, have were you a dancer in the past? No. <laughs> well, there goes that idea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because I like to go clubbing every once yeah. in a while. Yeah. Does that count? <laughs> by the way, how did you figure out that you had excessive supination? Was this diagnosed by a movement specialist or just something that you noticed yourself? Um, I I first noticed it myself because on my shoes they wear um like drastically on the edges, on the outer edges. Okay. And I have a lot of, I get like a lot of pain and, and, um, and stuff like that in my feet and my knees. And, and so I kind of Googled it and, um, I went to like a, a specialty shoe store as well. Oh yeah. Stay away from that shit. They're yeah. just going to crutch it. They're going to give you like insoles and yeah. things like that. I mean, I, I guess in the, in the, uh, in the meantime, it can help with some of the symptoms, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta address yeah. The root cause. Um, so, what the, some of the things I would focus on are stretching the calves, the soleus. So, these are the muscles of the back of the bottom of the leg. I would work on strengthening the tibialis. Okay, so this is the muscle in the front of the shin. So, you could do like toe raises. So, not heel raises, but toe raises to strengthen that. I would also and look at your uh, and I would also look at your hips um, because sometimes, it, it, well, oftentimes, it works up the kinetic chain. And people start to develop problems in their hips where maybe their feet turn out, uh, their hips are a little externally rotated. So I would look at uh, as far up as the hips, maybe do something like 90-90. Have you tried anything on your own? Have you found any success? Um, I do. I already do 90-90s um, and I do combat stretches and I do some other things, but not so much for like that area. But I mean, since doing those two movements, I've noticed a huge difference just in my mobility because I couldn't even um, sit Indian style, you know, at one point, my, my, um, it, my legs had just my knees and just moving. I, I just couldn't do a whole lot. And so since doing that, I'm able to um, sit like that or get into certain positions that I haven't been able to do in a long time. That's really good. I'm with Sal. I would definitely uh, drill home the the hip stuff. Even though it's probably stemming from the foot, there could be a lot of stuff that's reinforcing it in the hips. So continuing to progress that. I also have like a little thing. I like to, uh, I don't know if you have a lacrosse ball, um, but I love to get uh, barefoot and then mm. roll the, the the lacrosse ball on the bottom of your foot. So find the real sensitive parts, kind of keep pressure in that area. And then while I have kind of pressure in that area, I also try and like articulate my toes. And that I actually start with that before I go into a uh, combat stretch. Uh, then I get into my combat stretch. And then I like to do things like uh, tippy toe squats or even just working on calf raises barefoot and, and really paying attention to uh, my ankles. So what you'll notice is when we do like a calf raise, when you're barefoot like that, and you if you pronate or supinate, you'll have a tendency to either the the uh, the heels will kick out or they'll collapse inward, and you're trying to keep them neutral. And so just you doing a barefoot uh, calf raises and really paying attention to your ankles and not allowing them to kick out or collapse in and stay stabilized. So I would do like a calf raise, stand on my tippy toes and keep my, my ankles neutral, stay up there for like five seconds, come back down. Mm -hmm. And I'd repeat that for like five to 10 reps after I do my lacrosse ball and combat stretch. 
I think that's a great way to kind of wake up that entire area, strengthen the ankles. And then as you progress that, you can then actually even start to load the body in that position. First, be able to do that with just your body weight, and then you can start to load it. And then you can start to challenge it with strength and stability by doing like tippy toe squats. Yes. So I love to, once I get to a place where I, I have good control of that, I can keep my ankles neutral. I'm up in the, uh, uh, up on my toes. Then I'll actually squat down. And I, for me, I'll start with just the, you know, your body weight first and then barbell. And then if you can load, uh, that's a great way to kind of and see if you that. can get like a tennis ball that you can hold between oh, your yeah, ankles great. so you can keep that pressure inward so you're squeezing in and also too in terms of the pressure of your big toe that being the emphasis uh, just something as very basic as doing walking patterns in your house barefoot uh, but really emphasizing the pressure of your big toe to try and reestablish a bit of grounding there uh, so you have that sort of triangle of force so it goes from you know your your pinky toe your big toe and then right there where the tongue of your shoe is so when you're walking you're raising your heel you're getting it on that pad of the forefoot and that's what you're focusing on uh re-establishing a better way to 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 move something that will put emphasis on that that justin's talking about uh is uh, i would take a quarter and i would put it like when i'm doing these like the the calf raises and the tippy toe squats that i'm talking about is I would take a quarter and I'd put it under the uh, right there underneath the, the fat pad, right? So if you look, think about the triangle that, that Justin's talking about, uh, if you have a tendency to rolling out, I'm putting the quarter under that the the upper part, upper the right toe. Yeah, the big toe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I put the quarter there, so I'm thinking. So you have a little bit of feedback. So as you're doing the the calf raises and you're getting up on your tippy toes, you're thinking about driving through that quarter since you have a tendency to drive on the outsides of your feet. You're trying to push off the quarter. Yeah. One one more question. Do you know of anything? Thing that you did in the past, uh, like wore lots of high heel shoes, for example, that might have caused this for you? No, I have no idea because um, I don't wear high heeled shoes. I'm not a good dancer. <laughs> I just only maybe the last, you know, 10 years of my life, I actually got into fitness. I, you know, was just not into it before. I just, I don't, I don't know how how I got this. <laughs> okay. All right. No, no problem. But yeah, all the stuff that we said should help quite a bit. Uh, just, you know, ankle mobility in general, uh, and foot mobility in general should make an improvement, but it does take time practice frequently. Yep. Yeah. No, thank you. That's awesome. I'm going to look into all of those. Awesome. No problem. Yeah. Less common, much less common. To Way see. less. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can count on one hand how many clients I had, uh, that actually, uh, supinated. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's more common that the people pronate, mm -hmm. uh, and I couldn't even remember what, uh, so for me, I don't think it was a dancer I had. I couldn't remember if it was an athlete or, or what the reason was. You know, I actually, the other one was, uh, when sometimes when, uh, you're really, really overweight, you'll see that they kind of, they, they, they fold out. You'll see it's like somebody who's like a hundred plus pounds. Yeah. It's because of the, typically the fat mass around their thighs pushes them apart and it kind of drives that yeah. lateral. So that's the, oh, the only times really I see that. Otherwise it's almost always pronating. This is one of those I could have used the visual and the squat and the movement and the walking sure. and all that. Sure. That would have helped a lot, but yeah, it would have made a big difference, but it's, uh, it's still very challenging and it's, uh, it is a very interesting one. People like this often will roll their ankles uh, mm. to the outside. So they, they tend to be more susceptible to that if they ever try to go run or yeah. play tag with their kids. They'll roll their ankles quite often. You know, we didn't, and we didn't actually uh, say this, but this is a type of person too that I would, I would, I would barefoot train with after a while too. So after we do all the stuff, the prerequisites that we mm -hmm. talked about, uh, with the cross ball and all the uh, stability, mobility, strength exercises. Then the next phase after that would be all your just basic. I'd have her in the gym and having her doing walking lunges, and I'd be mm -hmm. having her do. I mean, even bicep curl. Everything would be barefoot, and us talking about the position of your feet and like trying to get that triangle going, like evenly evenly distributed while you do all your training. Mm -hmm.